Hello and welcome to My Two Kilos. My name is Shane uh, and I'm the uh, owner of Smartlifts. Uh, my goal here is to provide you with powerlifting content that's both informative and uh, entertaining. So let's just jump into the very first topic. Depth is not parallel. Shocking statement, I know. It's gonna cause ripples around the powerlifting world. The reason why I want to start with this topic is because it's very important because it trips up a lot of people in our sport. So first, let's just jump to the rule book. And the rule book states, failure to bend the knees and lower the body until the top surface of the legs at the hip joint are lower than the top of the knees. So the main thing here is the word parallel is not in our rules. So that's something that we need to move away from. It's not parallel. Parallel is level. You want to be below parallel. As it's explicitly stated is the top surface of the knee needs to be lower than the top surface of the hip joint. So this is kind of where the gray area begins because your hip joint is going to vary from person to person and the top surface of the knee shouldn't vary from person to person but there are issues that arise from uh, that language. Now we're going to enter my favorite part of powerlifting as a coach and as an athlete is how to live within that gray area to still get two white lights on competition but within the rules. So the first thing you want to consider here uh, is where the referees are situated. So where the referees are sitting is a very important factor, especially when judging depth. The main consideration you want to uh, observe is where the side refs are. So if the side refs are angled closer to the front, or are they perfectly in line with the side, or are they slightly further back, um, all of this is going to play a factor in how they are able to see or how I'm able to, to judge depth. Another big thing is where the spotters are. So maybe a local meet, you'll only have one side spotter. Perhaps you may have two, but it's important to see where they're standing and how that interferes with the referee's line of sight. Because if the referee is not able to clearly see the lift, then we go back to our rule book. The benefit of the doubt should always go to the lifters. So even if you're squatting parallel or maybe a little iffy, if the referee or if I cannot specifically see you in that moment, then I have to give the benefit of the doubt to you. So that's something to consider as an, uh, an athlete or a coach on game day is where the referee is looking at because then you can kind of adjust your squat depth to that specific location. The next thing to consider about uh, squat depth is uh, the color of your singlet. The brighter your singlet is, and this is just maybe a little dash of bro science and a little dash of opinion, but the brighter your singlet is, the easier it is for my eyes to attract to it and focus on it. So it's easier to see the creases in your singlet, the creases and indentations on your muscles, so that either benefits you if you're a good deep squatter, or it hinders you because now I can clearly see what uh, I'm looking at in that specific uh, moment. So I would recommend wearing darker colored singlets and maybe singlets that don't have panels. I know some of the Titan and SBE singlets have that side panel that could be a different color. So that gives a different uh, a delineation between the two, which again assists me as a referee from a referee perspective, um, seeing the uh, squat mechanic more clearly, even if uh, the lift may or may not be uh, as obvious. Of course, Another uh, big uh, caveat is different feds. We know different feds have different interpretations of the rules. Some like to white light three inch high squats, others don't. Uh, finally, hitting depth is very important in training. I mean, this topic has probably been beaten over and over again, so we'll just kind of move on from there. Uh, a couple other specific considerations that may not be talked about is your leg and quad size. So the bigger your quad is and, and the more shaped it is, then potentially inexperienced referees or uh, uh, just general observers may 
feel like your squats are higher because they're looking at the top of your quad rather than the top of, of your knee. The top of your knee will be lower than the top of your quad. And that's definitely something to consider. And it's not always a clear come meet day, which does cause some issues for some of the leaner athletes. Another consideration from a referee's perspective uh, is the speed of your descent. So the slower you go down to hit depth, you give me, the referee, plenty of time to hone in and wait for you to hit depth exactly. So if you're able to speed up your descent, maybe squat a little faster, of course this is 100% dependent on your technique and your skill set and your strength, but if you can squat a little faster, then you give the referee less time to observe where you are in depth, which should benefit you because again, the rules state the benefit of the doubt should go to the lifter. And then finally, uh, your width on your squat. So the wider you squat, the wider your heels and your feet are positioned, the more challenging it is to hit appropriate IPF depth, which then can cause issues uh, come meet day. Um, of course, this will play into uh, where the spotters are located too. If you have a very wide stance and there's spotters all over the place, kind of blocking or obstructing the referee's view, then it becomes a much more bigger challenge because you do see people with a much wider stance be observed a little more intently, if that's a word. What I mean by that is you may see refs, you know, lean in a little bit, kind of adjust to try to get a little bit of an angle because we know that the wider your feet position is, then the more difficult it is to achieve that competition depth. So those are some of the main gray area tools that you should be considering uh, come meet day and come uh, squat training to maximize your ability to get white lights. And, and really, three white lights is great and all, but you only need two. So aim for two. So this concludes the uh, first video of uh, my two kilos. So be sure to hit that like button or the subscribe bell. And uh, if you agree or disagree, I'd love to hear you uh, drop a comment below. Uh, and yeah, adios. Yeah,